Professor Claire Collins out of the University of Newcastle Nutrition and Dietetics, who, like some of us, Claire, you were still uh, doing the, the work over Christmas when there was a, a nice period of not that many people around. It's a great time to still be on the tools, isn't it? Just for clarification, Mark, no, I was not working over Christmas well, New Year. Christ- no, but, but I've been holidays, back. Yeah. I've been back for the last three mm. weeks. So yeah, really getting in, getting into it, and enjoying the quieter time as well. And uh, that means a brand new year and another nutrition challenge, which I know you'll get to. But first, some uh, wrap up from one that you did at the back end of last year. Yes, that's right. In spring, we did a spring eats challenge to try and help people feel better, get ready for summer, and save money and time in the kitchen and with food prep. So we've now evaluated those results and they were really exciting. We found that of the 500 people who signed up for the challenge, on average, they got a boost in their diet quality within no money, no time. If you take the healthy eating quiz, you get a score and it comes in points. So a boost of four was like 50% more than if if you hadn't been in the Mm. challenge. It was amazing. But what was really exciting was that on average, people told us they saved about $9 a week on money that they were spending on food away from home, which is phenomenal. And what we didn't expect was that on average, they dropped about half a kilo on average, and we weren't even really focusing on weight management. So what that tells you is when you eat healthy, you feel better, and oh, the numbers change on the scales. So on the back of that, we're actually going to start it again Sometime in February, we're just going through the final tweaks and and changes. So if you want to know about it and sign up, then go to our Facebook group. So it's Easy Eats at No Money, No Time. Just look for us on Facebook and we'll add a a link once we're ready to go, uh, go ahead with the challenge. But we're just doing one tweak that's new this year. We're going to have a look and see what happens if we have a weekly prize draw for everyone signs oh, up. Everybody likes to win prizes. Grocery yes. vouchers. Mm. We're trying to help people mm. save money. It's everyone's under so much pressure. So we thought we'll have a week a weekly prize draw of the people who, you know, open all the emails and click on the content. We'll we'll put them in the raffle and have a weekly prize draw and at the end we're gonna have a big raffle. Excellent. So you might win the prizes, and even if you don't, you'll uh, you'll be looking better, yeah. you'll be feeling better, yeah. save a couple of bucks. And, uh, yeah, so and- come to No Money, No Time Facebook and you'll find out all about it. But on the back of that, as people are heading back to work, like me, you've already been back, but the kids are all off to school this week, there's been a lot of interest and people have been asking us, how do you save money with school lunches and work lunches? So never fear We've always got the answer on no money, no time. You probably get sick of me here saying that. But if you just dive in there, we've got these articles called Easy Inexpensive Lunch Boxes to help you get back to work, where we looked at the literature and then the cost of the suggestions we were making and found that it could save you up to $1,000 a year. And then we've got another article there on $5 lunch boxes if you bring your lunch from home. And then especially for the kids going back to school because – Again, some people asked us, but how do you know what even goes in a lunch? We've got this new downloadable resource in the ebooks section under that tab on No Money, No Time called a Lunch Box Builder. Tells you what you need to get ready and takes you through the steps of, you know, using something with grains in, whether it's a bread or a wrap or some leftover pastoral rice, adding something that's got protein in, whether it's chicken or a can of baked beans or one of those little cans of tuna throwing in some vegetables, fruit, salad, and then really boosting up the interest by making sure you've got a variation in texture. So something crunchy, something soft, and of course the frozen bottle of water that you just refill and stick in the freezer the night before to keep your lunch cool. And the thing is, Claire, it is that double whammy. Yes, you you can save somewhere around that $1,000 a year and you divide that into weekly. That's that's still a great hit. But uh, that doesn't have to be a hit to quality. And it's good that the resource shows that, yeah, you can do it and, and be more resourceful with your wallet, but the actual nutrition will be there, the taste will be there, and, and all. you're not compromising. You're probably improving. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had a big article in one of the weekend newspapers. They did a double page spread on that and we actually created for them a list of lunches for school kids and I was saying to um, that journalist Julie Cross that it needs to be something that your grandparents would be proud of and I was telling her one of my favourite sandwiches was good old-fashioned curried egg and lettuce and she told me she'd never 
ever eaten a curried egg and lettuce sandwich. So I think this is something that grandparents can actually help with because good old curried egg and lettuce, it actually goes in the freezer. The key thing is you just got to separate the salad from the protein because lettuce does not freeze. We all know that, mm. but some people don't. And so if you make up, you take six eggs, you can make 12 sandwiches. The trick, I think, for curried egg is you just got to mash it till it's so fine that, you know, you'd be mashing with a teeny weeny fork, add a knob of margarine, a little glug of milk and a good generous heaped teaspoon of curry powder. Six eggs makes 12 sandwiches. Now put them in the freezer and in the morning you don't have to go, what's for lunch? You already know because it's already in the freezer. And then a salad, all you got to do is throw some cherry tomatoes and a handful of either one of those lettuce mix packets you get at the supermarket or rip a leaf off a good old cheap and cheery iceberg lettuce, put it in there and you can shove that in or eat it separate. So the key thing about saving money for lunch is packing it the night before. If you're a leftovers lover, that's the cheapest way because leftovers often get wasted. You just put that in a container if you're lucky enough to have a microwave at work. But doing it the night before means you can run out, you know, in that God help me zone in the morning when there's all oh, chaos getting me about kids it. to bus stops or you, you're trying to get to work. And you know it's not only are you saving money, but you're going to feel great and everyone you work with, honestly, they're going to be jealous when that <laughs> nice smell is wafting, at, wafting out of the microwave. Sounds pretty good, Claire. And, yes, that getting into the habit of doing stuff the night before when everybody has time to the morning when we all seem to not have as much time. But you'll be back Absolutely. Get, back for this for the rest of 2024 with some more great tips. We're off to a great start. As yep. always, thanks for your time. I'm really looking forward to it. And come to No Money, No Time Facebook and you'll be the first to know about the upcoming challenge. The first to, to, to win as well, maybe. For, all right, that is Claire Collins, Professor of, from Nutrition and Dietetics at the University of Newcastle with us on 2 and URFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.